Alrighty, it is a gorgeous day out here. We just finished up a day of procedures. So what I wanna talk about today is that we as a society, as humans, have been kind of led to believe by, you know, the major medical institutions, just kind of everybody, that chronic pain or orthopedic type pain can really only be coming from certain number of structures. Things like with osteoarthritis, the actual cartilage or the, the bones and things like that. Or a rotator cuff tear, that it, the pain is only coming from the rotator cuff. And if you've got shoulder pain and it's not the rotator cuff or it's not the joint, then, you know, not sure what, what else it is, go to physical therapy and see if they can help. And what I want to stress here is that there are lots of different tissues that can cause pain and can contribute to pain that just because your regular physician who's got 15, 20 minutes max with you, looks at your MRI, looks at your x-rays, just because they don't talk about it doesn't mean that they can't cause you pain. It doesn't mean that they're not the things causing you pain. And also doesn't mean that there's nothing you can do about it. So when we see, and this is not to have you guys come see us because that's not the point of this video. The point of the video is I want you guys to start exploring other types of tissues that could be contributing to your pain. Now, pain is perceived through a biopsychosocial model, which means there's biological, psychological, and social inputs and constructs that are going to change how humans perceive pain. Right now, I'm only talking about the biological because that's what I specialize in, is interventional treatments for the biological. And so that's what I'm gonna talk about because it's what I know the best. It's not the whole picture, but it's a part of the picture. And so there are different types of tissues that can cause pain. Those are things like, obviously our, our joints are so like the cartilage, the actual bones, the capsule around the joint can actually cause you some pain. We then have ligaments, we have tendons, we have muscles, we can get pain from fascia, we can get pain from nerves and fat pads, which that's mediated through nerves, but the fat pads are obviously something that we wanna discuss. This is all important to know because you might go to one doctor in the insurance system and they might take an x-ray, an MRI, and what they're predominantly looking at is are there any gross structural changes that could account for your pain? And if there's nothing, they might have some ideas for you, but a lot of the times they're kind of left not really knowing what to do next and you might get referred to another specialist. So you might get referred to the ortho surgeon because your PCP did the x-ray and saw nothing wrong. But what I find missed a lot of the time are these other structures that could be causing pain that are not being properly evaluated. Those are things like the nerves and the ligaments. Obviously fascia and fat pads fall in with that, but the biggest, biggest, biggest ones that I see that do not get properly addressed or discussed or evaluated, is probably a better way to put it, are the nerves and the ligaments. And part of the reason for that is because both of those things are not going to show major changes on an MRI unless there is significant damage, meaning like you had a major crush injury to a nerve or you severed a nerve or you tore a ligament uh, really, really badly. When you've got kind of the more chronic changes that occur, so ligament laxity or neurogenic inflammation, large majority of the time those are not going to show up on an x-ray. They're not going to show up, they're definitely not going to show up on an x-ray period. They're not going to show up on an MRI and so the way to evaluate for those is through the physical exam. And so if you are considering or you're not sure if ligament laxity is contributing to your pain or neurogenic inflammation is contributing to your pain, you want to make sure that you are seeking out a provider who is able to evaluate for those things. You probably won't be able to go to your regular doctor who never talks about uh, neurogenic inflammation or ligament laxity and say, oh, can you do evaluation for me for ligament laxity? Because any good physician, if they know something that they could evaluate for and potentially help you with, they're going to do that, right? And so if they haven't brought it to your attention yet, it's probably because they're not educated in that. And that's just how they were trained. And we can't always, we can't blame them for that. Now, 
if they're presented data about it and they ignore it and choose not to listen to the data, that's a completely different story. But we can't blame them for just not being educated because at the end of the day, there's a lot of things that we can't choose in our educational path and we can't choose that we were taught something or weren't taught something. So if you're struggling in chronic pain, please, please, please seek out evaluations with other providers who might be able to look into ligament laxity, neurogenic inflammation, and then other functional things that can occur, such as tendinosis or you know some mild pain coming from the cartilage, even though the x-ray and the MRI say it's fine. Please start looking for that stuff because that's hopefully where you will start to find more answers.